Good afternoon, everybody. It is Steve Luckner. Uh, we are here on Agenda Free TV, and if you're watching on YouTube on Agenda Free TV too, we're going to do a news roundup, talk about some of the day's top stories, and importantly, take your comments and questions on the air. So give me a shout. Uh, at Luckner on Twitter is where you can reach me uh, with your comments and questions. And thanks to our moderators who are in our chat rooms. I really appreciate it. Thank you, moderators. Ooh, hang on a second. Let me just get this going here. Um, we got um, Danny James is moderating. Thank you. Melissa McQueen, Lady Edith, Sarah Joy. They're all moderating. And we also have... Hang on here. I need to open everything up. We have our Twitch and Facebook and Twitter moderators as well. Oh, thank you, by the way, Timothy Magnone for the Facebook stars. I appreciate that, Timothy. Thank you. And we have viewers such as Debbie Smirthwaite, Jeff Curry, Kay Lowry Bhatti, and others, Brent Workman, Alex Duncan, Javier WW. Oh, one of our viewers, uh, and uh, Kreta on Twitch, one of our viewers, Shady and Shandy and Ted says, why Agenda Free TV 2? Did I miss something? So just to be clear, on YouTube only, I have two news channels. Only on YouTube, there are two news channels. Because we do the live news roundups on YouTube on Agenda Free TV 2. We basically do everything else on Agenda Free TV. Once in a while on YouTube, we're on Agenda Free TV too. If you're watching on Twitter or Facebook or Twitch, it's all one channel. There are two channels on YouTube. There's one on the other platforms. So if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to both Agenda Free TV and Agenda Free TV too. If you want to know why, there's a video I did months ago called like Second Channel where I talk about it. So you can go watch that video. It's on YouTube. I'll tell you what the video is called. We get a whole stream about it. Introducing Agenda Free TV 2 Second Channel More Coverage. That's just YouTube and it's only on YouTube. If you're on the other platforms, you don't have to worry about it. It's all on one channel. Okay. Now, oh, thank you, the princess. I appreciate that, the princess. Thank you. So I think I want to start by covering, uh, talk about what's going on in South Africa, because we haven't spoken about that. There has been um, a lot of looting and rioting going on in South Africa um, since the late last week. And it's nighttime there now, so uh, what time? It's probably the middle of the night there now. South Africa time. It's 10.26 p.m., not the middle of the night, but uh, that's what time it is there right now. But um, basically what happens is, so from what I can gather, um, this started, in, oh, hold on a second, Ugh. this started initially because a former president Jacob Zuma was arrested. He's been accused of corruption. But it doesn't seem from what I've been reading that a lot of the writing is, is all about that. Uh, from what I've been reading, uh, there are uh, really bad economic conditions there. Uh, that, is a, uh, that is something which is, uh, for a lot of people, is a reason for writing. So, uh, you know, you'll see stories about this and they might mention that like well the former president was was put in jail and you might think oh that's why everybody's rioting <laughs> but I keep reading articles that suggest well maybe that's some people but a lot for a lot of people uh, there's general dissatisfaction with what's going on in the country 
And of course, you might have people just taking advantage of the situation as well. Uh, if there's looting going on, some people might be, you know, figuring I can get in on it too. Not even making a not even making a political statement. They just want to get in on the looting. So it's you know, it's. Uh, but it's not as simple as like, well, they put the former president in jail and now people are rioting. So we'll talk about that a bit. But it's been, it's been a, a lot of looting. Um, according to this article, over 70 people dead now, over 1,000 arrested. And so some of the videos out there of the looting are pretty bad. Um, so uh, let's talk about well, this a little bit. Here's a Reuters article which just came out recently. Worst violence in years spreads in South Africa as grievances boil over. Crowds cash, crash with police and ransacked or set ablaze shopping malls. A lot of shopping malls have been attacked in cities across South Africa on today, with dozens of people reported killed as grievances unleashed by the jailing of the president, of president Jacob, former, of former President Jacob Zuma boiled over into the worst violence in years. Protests that followed Zuma's arrest last week for failing to appear at a corruption inquiry um, by the way, um, so I'm not very familiar with South uh, African politics, but I have read a number of articles that suggest that Jacob Zuma was involved in a bunch of corruption. Uh, I don't get the sense that it is somebody who is squeaky clean falsely being accused of corruption from what I've read. Anyways, um, but uh, protests that followed Zuma's arrest last week for failing to appear at a corruption, corruption inquiry have widened into looting and an outpouring of general anger over the hardship and inequality that persists 27 years after the end of apartheid. I hope I'm saying apartheid right, because I sometimes hear it pronounced apartheid. It says apar... I don't know. <laughs> that, that's not clear. According to this definition, Oxford language. Apartheid. This is apartheid. I think I've heard it say apartheid and apartheid. Probably apartheid. Let's see. Wikipedia says a uh, par ta, uh, tide. That says hi. That says apartheid. Apartheid? I'll say apartheid. There's also a South African pronunciation, which is apartheid. Apartheid is the South African pronunciation. Okay. I'll go with apartheid. Sorry, it's one of these words I, I read and then never actually pronounce. So when I pronounce it, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, again, but you can see the Reuters report says um, protests that began following former President Jacob Zuma's arrest when he failed to appear at a corruption inquiry have widened into looting and an outpouring of general anger over the hardship and inequality that persists 27 years after the end of apartheid. apartheid. Poverty has been exacerbated by severe social and economic restric restrictions aimed at blocking the spread of COVID-19. Uh, uh, governments working to halt the spread of, of, of violence and looting, which has spread from Zuma's home in KwaZulu-Natal province uh, to the country's biggest city, Johannesburg, and surrounding, I'm not going to get these pronunciations right, Gauteng province, and to the Indian Ocean port city of Durban. As many as 72 people have died and over 1,200 people have been arrested in the last few days of protests, which have now turned into rampant looting and riots. There have been reports of sporadic violence in, the, in two other provinces as well. Soldiers have been sent to the streets. Yeah, so in a second we'll look at some of the, like, the pictures of this. But it's, it, some, of the, some of the shots, of, some of the videos of the, of the looting and rioting are really bad. Zuma, the former president, was sentenced last month for defying a constitutional court order to give evidence at an inquiry investigating high-level corruption during his nine years in office. He also faces trial in a separate case on charges including corruption, fraud, racketeering, and money laundering. He pleaded not guilty. Zuma's foundation said there would be no peace in South Africa until Zuma is released from jail. Huh. 
Hundreds of looters raided warehouses and supermarkets in Durban, one of the busiest shipping terminals on the African continent and an import-export hub. Outside a Durban warehouse of retail or game, looters stuffed cars with electronic goods and clothes, a Reuters witness said. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. So I want to kind of show you some more about this. But I'd like to get you a little more analysis here. I think the BBC article might have had some analysis. Let's see. What's behind the rides? This is from BBC. Farouk Chothia. The catalyst for the riots in South Africa was the arrest last week of former President Zuma. With his supporters blockading major roads, the economic arteries of the nation, as they demanded the release of their political hero. Low income levels and unemployment, standing at a record high of 32.6% among the workforce. And young, almost half of young people are unemployed. 46.3% of young people are unemployed. Low income levels and unemployment are seen as the ticking bombs that have exploded. Many South Africans have been shaken by the riots. Um, that have sh uh, swept through Zuma's political heartland of KwaZulu Natal and the economic hub of Gauteng, of Gauteng, and many feel that his successor as President Cyril Ram Ramaphosa has failed to provide decisive leadership. I hope I'm pronouncing this name right, by the way. Ramaphosa. Doesn't say. I'll assume I am, but maybe I'm not. Uh, Mr. Ramaphosa, the current president was accused of belatedly deploying troops and only 2,500 of them compared with 70,000 he deployed to enforce a nationwide lockdown to curb the spread of COVID last year. Many residents in the affected areas have remained at home and some have formed what local media call defense squads to protect their neighborhoods and businesses as looting and burning continues. So this is the, it's happening, that's Zuma's province, right? KwaZulu, Natal, and it's also happening in Gauteng as well, where Johannesburg is. They have swept through Zuma's political heartland of KwaZulu, Natal, and the economic hub of Gauteng. So I'm going to show you some f pictures of this. Um... And also, uh, it is a province, KwaZulu Natal. Uh, and also take your comments about this. But it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Kay Lee N says, I think the pandemic is making the whole world nuts. Well, it certainly, you know, has worsened the economy in some places. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the Cuba. When I was reading the article a couple minutes ago, and it mentioned the pandemic worsening the economy, it is. It has definitely hurt Cuba. I mean, Cuba had these protests a couple of days ago. It's not clear what's going on in the last couple of days, but two days ago there were kind of spontaneous protests in Cuba in a, in a country where they really don't allow protests. And you know, it's not. It's pretty rare to have the protests. Um, and um, but from what I had read, um, I've read some articles talking about this. Well, the economy is really, really bad there. But a big reason for it is that a big part of the economy in Cuba is tourism. And tourism has really fallen off with the pandemic. So, you know, I don't know to the extent of that article mentioned uh, the pandemic as one of the factors in the bad South African economy. I don't know to what degree how much it's a factor. But, you know, we are certainly in both Cuba and South Africa, it sounds like economic uh, issues and economic complaints and uh, bad economy are a big reason for the protests. Robert Paul says, will you be covering South Africa anytime soon? Well, I'm talking about it right now, but if you mean will we do like a, a Jenna Free TV stream on it, I, I think what would have to happen is I would have to like sort of catch it like while stuff was going on live 
and you know it would have to be some kind of like big development i mean it's possible it's just it's the timing is kind of weird because right now there it's about 11 p.m right so they're um six hours ahead so i you know maybe there's a world in which we would do like a stream like super late night here uh it's just the problem is like their daytime is like our middle of the night so you know but I, it's, it's it's something i'll keep an eye on god for real says the economy is worse in all places Uh, GK says, I saw them looting an entire Dunlop tire factory. Brett Workman says, I just saw on Bloomberg a refinery was shut down because of the arrest. Uh, you can write to me on Twitter with comments, questions. Here's some pictures from Daily Mail. Oops. This is an article they came out with today. Uh, according to the Reuters articles, over 70 people have died. The, this says South, South shopkeepers fire on mob to protect their stores. Um, but uh, let me do this. This says a Reuters photograph. It says uh, South Africa is in the grip of its worst unrest since the end of apartheid, apartheid, with shopkeepers firing at looters. A self-armed local looks for looters inside a supermarket in Durban, and you can see the supermarket has been looted. That might be the same supermarket. Uh, empty shelves at a shopping mall in Durban. That's from it's a Reuters photo. Uh, shops have been damaged and ripped of their stock by crowds of looters. Video footage shared to Twitter on Monday showed people resorting to shooting at looters in a bid to protect their businesses. As looting continues in the Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal provinces. In the clip, a line of shop and property owners fired on the rioters from afar before running closer and continuing to shoot. Oh, and there's this thing about a baby that was dropped. BBC had something about this. A mother in Durban is forced to throw her baby from a building after it was set on fire. The BBC filmed a baby being thrown from a building in Durban that was on fire after ground floor shops were looted. The child was caught by a crowd of people. More than 200 shopping malls had been looted by Monday afternoon, Bloomberg says. More than 200 shopping malls. Several shopping centers in Soweto, South Africa's largest township, have been completely ransacked with ATMs broken into, restaurants, stores selling alcohol, and clothing shops all left in tatters. Law enforcement remains heavily outnumbered. Uh, livestock has also been stolen in KwaZulu-Natal. Ambulances are coming under attack by rioters in some areas. A blood bank was looted in Durban on Monday night. It's really bad. Over 200 malls. What I need to do is... Hang on a second here. I'm going to show you some reporting from local media as well. There is a channel, what's it called? I was just reading an article. There's like a ENCA. E I want to see what they're saying too.
Today I'll show you something from local media. Mark said he saw unrest and looting in a Sky News video. Debbie says loss of property is not the story, it's the hunger and poverty that is essential to this problem. Travis Botha says, I am in South Africa. Feel free to post more about what you're seeing, if anything. You might not be in the place where this is going on. Our viewer Banana Bananu says, no tourism hurts hard along with COVID going nuts there. We'll talk more about the COVID situation there. I, I, I haven't read about the tourism situation, but I wouldn't be surprised if tourism has gone way down in the pandemic because we've seen that in other countries. This is an article from Times Live, which is a South African uh, news outlet. Uh, KZN, uh, that's, that's, that's one of the provinces where the rioting is going on. KZN paramedics unable to reach critically ill patient after ambulance is stoned. Private ambulance service paramedics were left traumatized after their vehicle came under attack while they were rushing to attend to a medical emergency. They couldn't help the patient because of the, the attack. So you can say private ambulance association pulls vehicles off the road as protests continue. More than 30 private ambulance services in KwaZulu Natal stopped operating to protect their vehicles from rampaging protesters yesterday. They have a bunch of videos if you want to watch them on um, Times Live. They also have this report too. More than 100 network towers hit in violent protest ICASA. which is an authority in South Africa. Uh, 113 network towers have been hit. Uh, the attacks have resulted in the disruption of communication services, closure of some community radio stations, and vandalism of network facilities. I wonder if that helps, that hurts, if that's hurting cell phone stuff. Ryan the Gamer says, I'm sending my thoughts and prayers to South Africa. So again, um, this has been gone, um, this has been going on since, um, since uh, late last week. And the riots, again, the catalyst for them was the arrest of a former, of the former president, Jacob Zuma, who was accused of corruption. But from a bunch of articles, it says that are putting the blame on uh, the really bad economic situation there and uh, dissatisfaction with how the country is being run.
Debbie says, are they receiving vaccines? I don't know what the exact situation is with vaccines in South Africa. Here's an article uh, from Wall Street Journal. South Africa's looting and violence reflect inequalities exacerbated by COVID-19 pandemic. Unrest triggered by the arrest of the former president risks worsening the surge in coronavirus infections, causing food insecurity. Hang on one second here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, violence and looting in parts of South Africa triggered, as we've been saying, as the articles have been saying, triggered by the arrest of the former president, uh, but the violence and looting are broadening to reflect more deep-seated problems in uh, South Africa, where a third pandemic lockdown is exacerbating economic pain and joblessness that has disproportionately affected the poor. Police and soldiers struggled for another day. When was this article written? Uh, today. Struggled for a third day to contain crowds wet ransacking warehouses and shopping centers in the economic capital of Johannesburg in the port city of Durban. Uh, there is a record wave of COVID infections there right now. But does, uh, many nurses and other staff have been unable to go to work because of roadblocks and the broader insecurity. The country's police ministry warned the continued blockage of some of South Africa's main transport routes could within days lead to shortages of food and other essentials. Some of the 72 people who died were trampled to death in shopping center stampedes. Uh, this one protester who they talked to Oh, no, one South African resident who Wall Street Journal talked to, who has a stall where he sells, stall where he sells various goods, uh, he had checked on his wares in a nearby storage facility and saw people leaving with everything from plasma televisions to sound systems and groceries. He said the spark for this may have been the arrest of former President Zuma. Now it's a revolution against the lockdown because nothing is being provided. The protest started over the weekend uh, in Mr. Je in former President Zuma's home province over his arrest for contempt of court. Uh, Jacob Zuma, who resigned three years ago as president but still commands support within the ruling Afri African National Congress, had been sentenced to 15 months in jail for refusing to testify at a government commission investigating corruption allegations. He is denied wrongdoing. By the time the protest reached the city center in impoverished townships of Johannesburg, residents turned their anger on stores and malls whose offerings had become increasingly unattainable over the past year as South Africa's economy sank into its deepest recession on record. Officials and witnesses had said some of the looters were experienced criminals, but others just seized on an opportunity to take whatever they could. The looting and violence are emblematic of the economic and social dislocation the pandemic has unleashed in many developing countries. Govern this is interesting. Governments from Colombia to Lebanon, in addition to South Africa, lack the resources to provide the economic stimulus and social security programs implemented in richer countries. So what they're saying is, you know, uh, the economy has been severely hurt around the world uh, during the pandemic. In some countries, they have the means, you know, like a country like the U.S., they have the means to uh, spend a lot on pandemic aid to give to people. But this article in the Wall Street Journal points out that other countries don't have those resources and they can't give lots of aid to people. Also, limited, limited supplies of COVID-19 shots are holding back the recovery as fresh waves of infections continue to overwhelm hospitals and cause thousands of deaths. The World Bank says in South Africa, South Africa has the highest levels of inequality globally.
Yeah, the, uh, the official unemployment rate stood at 33% at the end of March, a figure that rises to 43% when discouraged job seekers are included. Huge number of people out of work. So, um, anyways, it's, this is a bad situation. You can read more in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Starfire says, is COVID rampant there? I thought they had their own variant in South Africa. There was a variant that was known as the South African variant that originally became prominent in South Africa. I don't know if it originated there. But I don't know what the current situation is there. It's possible that they might have most, like, they're getting more of the Delta variant now. That's the, the one that's kind of been sweeping around the world. So, because the quote-unquote South African variant, we were hearing about that a month ago. So I wonder if I can find anything out about that. I mean, here's an article right here. South Africa hit hard by Delta variant. That's the one that originally became prominent in India. Uh, it's becoming more, much more prominent in the United States. Uh, it spreads way faster than the original variant did, and also, I believe, faster than the, the quote-unquote British and uh, South African variants did. This is a Jerusalem Post article. This is, uh, South, Southern Africa had hoped it was through the worst of the COVID-19, then the Delta variant arrived. That's from CNN. Talks about the crowding in hospitals. Hospitals turning away ambulances carrying COVID patients. Uh, daily COVID death toll in South Africa has been surging since early June. Reported deaths averaged uh, over 300 a day in the last week, about four times the rate a month earlier. 16 months in the pandemic in South, into the pandemic in South Africa, doctors describe a system beyond its breaking point. Also, Africa is far behind the global vaccination drive. Low rates of vaccination in South Africa. They did expect another wave, but some scientists thought the very worst was over. But now it's the worst. It's, I guess it looks like it might be the worst they've had. If not, then approaching it. While countries like the UK and the US are seeing surges in Delta infection, their widespread vaccination coverage should provide some protection from severe illness. Vaccination coverage is still exceptionally low on the African continent, fertile ground for a new variant like Delta. And you can read more about this. Namibia has a lot of, I don't, I don't we're, this is kind of getting, uh, this is a bit of a digression, but I was reading about Namibia a couple nights ago. Now, I think Namibia in Africa might be one of the worst rates of infection in the world. In recent weeks, one of the worst hit countries in the world has been Namibia, South Africa's neighbor to the northwest. Here. You know, if there were no vaccines, uh, then you'd have it around the world getting way, way worse now, you know? I'm sure in the U.S., if there were no vaccines, the U.S. with, with the Delta variant would be going through some, might, might be significantly worse than it had ever been here. But some countries, a lot of people have taken a lot of vaccines. U.K., Israel. But in the countries where they're not really vaccinated, you have this worse-than-ever variant 
sweeping across the countries. So, so uh, anyways, so, yeah, we, we got to, um, I certainly want to keep an eye on what's going on in South Africa. But I got to, what I got to do is I got to kind of look up, again, because it's a, it's a seven, it's a seven hour um, time difference. So maybe we'll do a stream on it, but it would be like super late at night. This S A B C. Ooh, okay. Here's something here. This was posted about an hour ago by Jayed Lay Pulse. Uh, who is, in, is a South African reporter about an hour ago. In the Durban Central Business District in West Street, smoke billows from a building. Authorities and firefighters are on the scene. Several shops have been looted on this stretch. Miss Sal says it's not just South Africa. Lebanon is going to the wall. Also, it's crazy times. Lebanon is in one of the worst, uh, is in like a, a incredibly bad economic crisis. I believe it's one of the worst in the world in some years. That's a different story. Hang on one sec here. I just want to check something. This is an article from today from South SABC News, which is in South Africa. Seal confident that looting in unrest will subside with deployment of SANDF, which I assume are soldiers. SANDF explored, uh, deployed in Alexander. The police minister, Becky Seal, says he's confident looting and violence will subside now that the South African National Defense Force has been deployed to assist the police. Seal says the presence of the army will lessen the burden on the police who've been criticized for not being able to control the looting in some parts of the country. Pan Mall has been destroyed and similar surrounding shops ransacked. We'll see what happens. And these are South African soldiers on the streets to help prevent more rioting and looting. Guys, if you post toxic stuff in the chat, toxic political stuff, you're going to get timed out. Just, just letting you know.
Carol Alfonso sent me this. This is a video posted by CBS News of crowds ransacking shopping malls. I don't know if that's a shopping mall or that's a warehouse or something. That's from ENCA. That's, today, that's on Tuesday. Number six says, hope it calms down in South Africa. No, Halen Place says, is this all by Zulus because Jacob Zuma was imprisoned? Article after article says that it's not the case the riots are all about former President Jacob Zuma being arrested. They're saying that in large part, these looting and riots have blown up because people are aggrieved over the horrible economic situation in the country. That's what the articles say. Okay, so I'm going to certainly keep an eye on, on that story. We'll see if we end up streaming on Agenda Free TV about it. I just, it's got to, you know, has to be the right time of day. Our viewer, Banana Bananu, says, when people can't afford to eat, things go bad fast. I was in Zimbabwe when the economy collapsed. Hey, thanks, Paul Dorman, for the Facebook stars. Travis Botha says, uh, you can get live updates on the Google, on the app Zello. So I, Zello is like an app where people talk like on the radio, like they talk, they use their phones as like walkie talkies, right? So I would, if, if I got Zello, I would need to know where to go on Zello to get the updates. So if, if you want, um, uh, if you have a suggestion about where to get updates, I'm certainly all ears. That would be good. Uh, that was our viewer, um, Travis Botha. If, if you can do it, though, maybe message me on Twitter, at Lookner on Twitter, and you can say, well, if you download this app and then you go here on the app, uh, you could get updates. I mean, I, I'm thinking it's like, like there might be like a Telegram group where people are posting updates, but if I don't know the group, then it doesn't really have, help me to have the Telegram app. So I, I'm going to be doing some research about this and trying to find some more sources. So if you do have any suggestions, that would certainly be welcome. Just message me on Twitter, at Lookner. If you post it in the chat, I might not see it. Uh, thank you, number six, for your support. Number six says, what a world at Mo. I don't know what you mean by at Mo. Is it a typo? Thank you, number six. Hail in places must be terrifying there. Fredo says Zello has channels. Oh, our viewer, 
sent me, uh, James Russell sent me uh, a thread from a, a reporter who's at ENCA, which is a news channel there, I believe. Let's see here. Uh, Dasin Thafia, who is uh, a South African reporter, says, did you ever think Durban's central business district would look like this? Looks like they have a lot of it blocked off. He also said, we came on across this burnt out truck earlier today. It wasn't removed. Now we see two other vehicles have crashed into it and caught a light. He posted that yesterday. And then he wrote, posted this yesterday. He said, uh, parts of the Phoenix community in South Africa have taken up arms. At least five people accused of looting are dead. Several cars torched. Armed residents who forced us to leave say they are just protecting their families. Extremely volatile situations stay away. Thank you for the, for the uh, heads up. Oh, and then e ENCA also posted this uh, earlier today. Looting sprees continue in KwaZulu-Natal. These are aerial shots of people looting. It's a whole two-minute video. You can watch it on ENCA. Let me skip through here. Some of those residential areas that, that I was talking about, if I had to conservatively put an est estimate to the number of people that we've seen below us now, it would run into either many hundreds or possibly the thousands and then you have to ask yourself how many police officers or how many military personnel is it going to take to stop this in the middle of what is happening right now so this is from uh dasin thathia it's a whole two minute video i can't play the whole thing but like if you want to see it go to enca um i guess he was going around in a helicopter looking at the looting, just talking about how many people he's seen out there. And uh, this was posted earlier. It, this happened today. This was around noon today. You can see it got posted about 6 a.m. U.S. time, U.S. Eastern time. Um, but this is going on. Oh, now look at this. He also posted a poster, a picture, Dasen Thathia. This is a picture he posted of like a mall area. Looks like looks like a mall area. I assume it's a store. Uh, here's a different reporter posting something today. This is um, Sifamandla Ghosh. 
Police service still has their hands full dealing with looters in the Peter Maritzburg Central Business District. Some are looting some one of the butcheries. See, it says your family butcher. Oops. Anyways. What is this? Anyways, so I'll keep an eye on that. Um, I, you know, we might do a live stream on it, maybe like late at night. So, Miss Sal said the fire at the shopping center was absolutely huge. Clear gray sky said that big mall got wrecked two days ago. Yeah, some, sometimes, you know, if you send me videos, I kind of need to know if it's like a random person posting it on the Internet, then I'm, I can't really verify it's from, uh, uh, from you know, what, it, what it's supposed to be. So I, I appreciate people sending me videos, but if it's like from some account that I have no familiarity with and I can't tell where they're getting it from, it's not really something I can show because it might not even be from the last few days. Yeah, let me just show you one more article about this. I know we're talking about, this, talking about this a bunch, but we just haven't talked about it. So this is an article from yesterday about South African military called in to quell violence. Protests over the imprisonment of former President Jacob Zuma have escalated into looting and other destructive lawlessness fed in part by poverty and scant opportunity. Look at this. Look at how many people are there. Yesterday, the president of South Africa deployed the military in an effort to quell the escalating civil unrest that's led to, it's now over 70 deaths, damage to businesses, disruptions of the nation's coronavirus program. Mr. Ramaphosa, the current president, has faced criticism for his silence in the early days of the unrest. Yesterday, he sought to take a firm stance against the violence, saying looters and rioters would face the full weight of the law. Much of the destruction now seems to have little to do with anger over Mr. Zuma's imprisonment, government officials said, and appears instead to be opportunistic lawlessness. Well, uh, there's also people upset about the economy. Some analysts and activists said it was an uprising born of the deeper issues of poverty and lack of opportunity plaguing South Africa. Images on local news stations showed malls burning, hundreds of people leaving stores with items like clothes and appliances, and the police chasing down and arresting whoever they could catch. Parts of major highways were shut down after vandals burned trucks in the middle of them.
Okay. We'll move on to a different topic now, but that's certainly a topic I'm keeping an eye on. Hey, thanks to our moderators. Uh, we have uh, Melissa McQueen is moderating right now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Marcus Bell is moderating. Mark Helton, good to see you, Mark. Mark Helton is moderating. Lady Edith is moderating. Uh, also, um, we have... Hang on. Betty Nelson said, any Snapchat? I checked Snap Maps the other day. I didn't really see much. I'll check it again. Ellie Bourne, Mark and NC, Papa Bear and Racing Neophyte are all moderating as well. Yeah, I mean, Durban, this area is where there's been some riding, and if I click on Snap Maps, I get a video from five hours ago saying, so bored. That's something. That's somebody in the distance getting something. In the distance. I'm not hearing anything on it, though. There's not much that I see there. there. There might be like a Telegram channel. Oh, here's something from, no, that's emergency purchasing. This is somebody from a day ago. All right. Let's talk about, uh, we're going to talk about, Q let's go over to Cuba and talk about that. It's very hard to tell what's going on in Cuba right now. But I tend to think if there were enormous protests like, well, they weren't, if there were protests as big as they were on, what was it? Sun Sunday, I would think we'd be hearing something about it. But um, on Sunday, there were there were some of the, I believe, the biggest protests in several decades in Cuba. They were just to be clear, though, it wasn't millions of people protesting. Uh, in some places, there were hundreds. In some, there may have been thousands. But you know, I, I was you know. It's not millions. It's a, I believe it's the population of Cuba is 11 million people, um, if I have that right. 11 million people. So, but it was very significant because, I mean, that protesting isn't really allowed there, and it's very rare. So, uh, and what basically happened in Cuba is there was like a protest that started in one town of several hundred people, and from what I understand, other people heard about it on social media and said, we're going to go protest too. And it was like this spontaneous protest thing. And a number of people in protest were posting videos like on live on Facebook. So people, some people were watching on Facebook Live seeing these protests going on. Uh, the government apparently started uh, shutting down some of the Internet, started shutting down uh, certain uh, social media uh, platforms. And... It's been hard to tell what's going on in the last couple days, but also we've heard about like people protesting, getting arrested, uh, about uh, you know police and uh, may, maybe soldiers in the streets, but definitely like armed uh, authorities in the streets. So 
I don't. I I would think if the same amount of protesting were going on, we'd hear something about it. Um, but I, I can't speak to what exactly is going on there because of the lack of information coming up. But we'll talk about that as well. Here's an update. This is a CNN article. So you talked about people being arrested. More than 100 arrested or missing in Cuba after widespread protests, say activists. Anti-government activists in Cuba say more than 100 people have been arrested or missing. On Sunday, CNN journalists witnessed multiple people being forcibly arrested and thrown in the back of vans at protests in Havana. Videos of the protest show demonstrators turning over a police car and throwing rocks at officers. The Cuban government has not said how many people were arrested or injured in the protests. These are the largest protests on the island in decades, as Cubans complained about a lack of food and medicine as the country undergoes a grave economic crisis aggravated by the pandemic and U.S. sanctions. Big food shortage in, in um, I was reading some articles from like about a month ago about like huge food shortage in Cuba. I'll show you that as well. I believe this might have been where it started, in San Antonio de los Banos, a town of about 46,000 people. Hundreds of Cubans took to the streets on Sunday, fed up after nearly a week of electricity cuts during the sweltering July heat. Everyone was in the streets, one resident said. They have gone out six days with only 12 hours of power each day. That was one of the things that blew this up. The already struggling Cuban economy has been hit hard as tourism, which is a big part of their economy, uh, has dropped off. And good Im tourism and good imports have dropped steeply during the pandemic. They are also getting more... Uh, on, uh, on Sunday, they reported a record single-day increase in COVID cases and deaths. Montpelier says sanctions hurting people, not the government. Um, there are different opinions about, uh, you know, U.S., sanctions on Cuba, which are directed at the government. Um, but some people support them and some people think they should be lifted in the U.S. Give me a shout with your comments, questions, at Lookner on Twitter. Thank you, by the way, Janet McLaughlin, for the Facebook stars. I appreciate that, Janet. Thank you. Avalyn says, Cuba has shut down Internet access. Now, my understanding is that they didn't, like, totally shut down the Internet, but they have severely, they have limited it in some ways. Um, so here you can see this, social media restricted in Cuba amid widening anti-government protests. Now, I don't know that the protests are widening now. Uh, they were widening on Sunday, but I don't believe they've been widening since then. Um, Netblock says, network data confirm partial disruption to social media and messaging platforms. The targeted restrictions are likely to limit the flow of information from Cuba following widespread protests on Sunday as thousands rallied against the government's policies and rising prices. The restrictions are ongoing as of Tuesday afternoon local time. NetBlock's metrics show that communications platforms WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as several some Telegram servers, are disrupted on government-owned uh, the government-owned network. I assume that's what people use there. Uh, including the cell network, the government-owned cell network. Findings corroborate user reports of disruptions to the services. 
VPN services, which can work around internet censorship, do remain effective for many users at the time of writing. But it seemed like like to, like like Tuesday after like Sunday afternoon Sunday during the day there were like several streams on of people streaming live from Cuba. I know at one point I tried to watch one of the streams after the fact and it wasn't there anymore. So I don't know if I haven't done a big search. I don't know if those streams are still up. It's possible the government took them down. Lady Edith says, take care of your citizens, Cuba. Then one of our viewers earlier mentioned uh, a protest that the viewer was aware of in Tampa going on over um, where people who are in the U.S., maybe they're former Cubans or have relatives there or are just sympathetic. There's some people in the U.S. that I've heard about holding protests in support of the Cuban protesters. So look, here's an article about this. This is from, oops, Spectrum News 9. Cuba protests extend to Tampa. Hundreds of people gathered last night in Tampa, again calling for freedom and democracy in Cuba. The island is seeing a rare uprising. Well, rare protests on Sunday as food and medical care grow scarce. The Cuban government has shut off at least some internet access, but that's not stopping Cubans and Cuban Americans from making their voices heard. In Tampa, crowds gathered Monday at Hillsborough Avenue and Armenia Ave to make their voices heard. Hundreds blocked off the major intersection there, marching and waving Cuban flags. There's been a bunch of protests in Miami. Anyways, that's from uh, Spectrum News 9. Then this is a you know, protest in Miami. Miami demonstrators block highway to support Cuban protests. Demonstrators expressing solidarity with thousands of Cubans who waged a rare weekend of protests in Cuba shut down a stretch of major South Florida Expressway on today. They gathered at a busy Miami intersection in support of Cubans. South Florida is home to the largest U.S. population of Cuban Americans. Benito Sanchez says Cuba is like an isolated pond that is being protected by other pieces. Shadow Rider says this is a good example in Cuba. Cuba is a good example of a population that has no means of defending themselves from a brutal, repressive government. So protesting is not really allowed in Cuba. Um, if you just like look it up, for example, Cuba, Human, right, Human Rights Watch, Cuba. The Cuban government, according to Human Rights Watch, Cuban government represses and punishes dissent and public criticism. Tactics against critics include beatings, public shaming, travel restrictions, short-term detention, fines, online harassment, surveillance, and termination of employment. In October 2019, Miguel Diaz-Canel was confirmed as president of Cuba with nearly 97% of the votes of National Assembly members. His presidency has seen little change in the government's human rights policy. Arbitrary detention and harassment of critics continue. Uh, under his government, Cuba has used a, a law uh, to, and severely limits free speech to, de to, to, to de a law which came to effect and severely limits free speech to detain, fine, and harass critics. The government continues to employ arbitrary, arbitrary detention to harass and intimidate critics. The government controls virtually all media outlets in Cuba and restricts access to outside information. 
Cuba has the most restricted climate for the press in the Americas, according to a 2019 Committee to Protect Journalists report. A small number of independent journalists and bloggers managed to publish articles, videos, and news on websites and social media. The government routinely blocks access within Cuba to many news websites and blogs. This is from Human Rights Watch. Cubans who criticize the government continue to risk criminal prosecution. They do not benefit from due process guarantees, such as the right to fair and public hearings by a competent and impartial tribunal. Prisons are often overcrowded. Prisoners are forced to work 12-hour days and are punished if they do not meet production quotas. Um, anyways, so you can see uh, protesting is, is not common in Cuba, and it is dangerous for people doing it. Sam Patton, our viewer, says human rights are non-existent in Cuba. Uh, on South Africa, Mrs. Hemminger says, seems like the looting in South Africa is getting worse started in province, but now is spreading to the capital. I didn't hear that it was spreading to the capital. Uh, uh, Wikipedia says, South Africa has three capital cities. But I, I've heard it's in um, Pretoria, Blomfontein, and Cape Town. I didn't hear about looting in the articles we read in those places, but it is, there, there's, uh, in the province where Johannesburg is, there's been looting and rioting there. So I, I don't get the, and I, 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 I don't have enough information to say what, what it was like there today versus yesterday. There was certainly looting and some violence and, you know, rioting going on today as to whether it was worse than yesterday or not. I just don't know. I, I would have to get a lot more information about that. I'll be looking into it more later on, on my own. We may do a stream on it. But we talked about, just so you know, we talked about South Africa extensively. The whole first part of this broadcast was about South Africa. Anton Scorpio says the Western powers want the entire Caribbean to be a banana republic to be exploited by food companies and tourism. Cuba's a holdout. That's what Anton says. Yeah, Johannesburg is not a capital. It's the economic capital, I guess. I saw an article describe it as the economic capital. No, Warren, we haven't talked about Surfside yet on this broadcast. We might, but we haven't yet. Oh, thank you, Kay Lowry Bhatti, for the Facebook stars. If I didn't thank you before, thank you. Adrian Acuna says Cuba Libre. Is it Cuba Libre? It's Cuba Libre, but I might not be pronouncing that right. So yeah, I don't ha I don't have much in terms of updates from Cuba because there's not much coming out of there.
this was from yesterday. Cuba sees biggest protest for decades as pandemic adds to woes. Oh, I know what I was going to show you. There was an interesting article. I wanted to show you about that. Where is it here? So this, look, this, this was posted, oh no, this was posted uh, last, last fall. This was posted last fall. Cuba's economy was hurting. The pandemic bought, brought a food crisis. Now this was posted last fall. The island was, was able, now they, it's, the coronavirus is getting worse there recently with the Delta variant. The island was able to initially control the coronavirus, but the dearth of tourists in the pandemic's wake strangled in an economy already damaged by mismanagement and U.S. sanctions. And again, this, isn't re this is from last September, and they were having a food sh crisis then. The line to get into the government-run supermarket, which can mean a wait of 8 to 10 hours, happened to be short, just two hours long. And this person sc uh, scored toothpaste, a rare find, and splurged on $3 on canned meat. It's the first time we have seen toothpaste in a long time, he said. Cuba's economy, already hurting from crippling U.S. sanctions and mismanagement, was particularly vulnerable to the economic devastation that followed the pandemic. Tourists traveled to Cuba, plummeted, and the island lost an important source of hard currency, plunging it into one of the worst food shortages in nearly 25 years. I've also read, I don't know if it says in this article, but I've also read about how remittances, uh, a lot of people who are from Cuba send, send money back there, but with the world economy doing worse, there's less money coming back in from people who are outside Cuba working and then sending money back. Uh, COVID-19 put a stop to tourism, and remittances sent by Cubans who live abroad began to dry up as the illness led to huge job losses in the U.S. That left the Cuban government with far fewer sources of revenue to buy the products it sells in state-run stores, leading to shortages in basic goods throughout the island. Now, and again, this article is from last September, but it gives you a sense of what people are going through there. This is from the New York Times. And then look at this. This is an article in The Economist, and this was just two weeks ago. This was July 1st. Cuba is facing its worst shortage of food since the 1990s. Government bungling and a shortage of dollars are to blame. So, you know, we, we, we saw one article that talked about people protesting on Sunday and being upset about having blackouts and not having enough electricity. As you can see, there's real food issues there as well. So it, it didn't strike me that the protests on Sunday in Cuba were some sort of like purely like we don't like communism or something. It seemed that they were really about people's material conditions, uh, electrical, uh, electric, you know, electricity, ec economy. I'd be surprised if food wasn't in there. See, this says, look, it talks about tourism and remittances during the pandemic. The main problem is the government's lack of hard currency. Tourism, normally 10% of GDP, has atrophied, atrophied because of the pandemic. Whereas 4.2 million people visited in 2019, just over 1 million did last year, all in the first three months of the year. Remittances, people sending money back to Cuba who are working elsewhere, have also suffered. In addition, this year's harvest of sugar, one of Cuba's main exports, was the worst in more than a century as a result of drought. So things are not good economically in Cuba. Jacques says the situa our viewer Jacques says the situation in Cuba is directly caused by the pandemic. You can see that this is an, this article again is from The Economist. Sue Baker says, can you imagine waiting in lines for 10 hours for food and supplies? Poor people. Lady Edith thinks basic needs is what the protests are about. Amy says, Murphy says, is it true that the government of Cuba refused COVID vaccines donations from other countries? I believe in Cuba they're, only, they're using their own vaccine.
this is from uh, Bob. Oh, that's 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 an old. I can't I can't get the whole article there. I don't know how well their vaccine works there. Let's see. I was reading something about that. I think a couple weeks ago, but. This is Cuba approves emergency use of its own Abdallah vaccine. It's from DW.com. The communist country is the first country in Latin America and the Caribbean to successfully develop a coronavirus vaccine. I don't know how well it works against the um, Delta variant. Cuba already produces 80% of vaccines used in the country and exports some of them. So they are using some foreign vaccines. The official numbers in Cuba are getting much worse. I don't know how reliable the official numbers are. But if you look at Worldometer... Look at the daily new cases. This is just the official number. Look at this. Daily new cases. So they've been like way more than they've ever been. And daily new deaths. I mean, just look at, look at these graphs. Some of these graphs are crazy. It's Delta variant. That's what it is. Delta variant comes in and it spreads much faster. Jeff Haas says 92% effective. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's just Cuba giving those numbers. I, 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 you know, I would need to see some kind of, I want to see some numbers about their effectiveness of that vaccine that's not Cuba given. And also specifically about Delta variant. I don't have those numbers. But you can, I mean, even the official numbers are getting much worse there. And look at, like, this is Namibia. We were talking about Namibia, uh, which is next to South Africa. I mean, just look at the... You have countries that are just doing way worse than they've ever done. Delta variant. Debbie says, Ugh, Delta in Cuba. So I will, you know, I'll be keeping an eye on the situation in Cuba. It, I, I don't get the sense that there's a major uprising in the offing. Uh, it sounds like the government is clamping down pretty hard. Uh, but if I hear about, you know, big new developments, we'll certainly let you know. Uh, give me a shout on Twitter, at Lookner on Twitter. We should mention France as well. Carol says, you pronounced Cuba Libre right, but in Cuba this term equals an act of betrayal and can be punished by death squad. That's from Carol Alfonso. Logger in camp says there is also tribal politics involved in South Africa. Yeah, I, I didn't really get into that aspect of it. There's certainly, I am not fluent in South African domestic politics. Um, and uh, so 
I didn't mean to suggest that there wasn't any of that involved, uh, and I probably should have mentioned that. Um, so, for example, I was reading an Economist article about it, um, and it was talking about some of the domestic politics involved. I just, I don't really feel comfortable getting into it because it's just I so I know so little about it. Um, but to be fair, I mean, when I read various articles by people who do know about it, uh, the big thing they're mentioning is, uh, you know, the bad economy situation there. Here's an economist called South Africa's government deploys the army to quell unrest. Blah, 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 blah. You know, anyways, so they talk about some of the domestic political issues in here. But look, in, in no way, in the same way with Cuba, certainly somebody, we're just doing like a basic overview. And I am not an expert on Cuban uh, politics in Cuba, in Cuba in general, and nor am I on South Africa. So certainly somebody who lived there would be able to provide much more context. This is by no means, uh, I, I don't think people are taking it this way. When we kind of touch on what's going on, it is in no way meant to be, meant as like an exhaustive, a deep dive into what's going on. Okay. Thank you, Lager and Camp, for writing in. You know, we've been talking about um, talking about the uh, the Delta variant. There was an interesting thing in France today, where France is now going to mandate that every health worker gets the vaccine, and also they're saying like you're going to have to like go to a restaurant in France. You're going to have to prove that you either have been vaccinated or you had a recent negative test. Here's, uh, hang on a second, like, look at this. New COVID rules spark French, France vaccination rush. This is from France 24. A record number of French people have been booking appointments for vaccines after President Macron announced restrictions on the unvaccinated, including mandatory tests to enter restaurants. So you will not be able to go to a restaurant in France until you can show that you've either been tested recently or vaccinated. Macron said anyone wanting to go out to eat or drink, take a long-distance train, or visit a shopping center would need to show a health pass, which means either proof of vaccination or a negative test. The pass will also be needed to attend a festival, a theater show, or a, cin or a movie <laughs> as part of the government strategy to tackle the surging number of new cases linked to the Delta variant. Also, health care staff will mandatory vaccinations for health care staff, retirement home workers, and others working with vulnerable people from September, in line with similar moves in Greece, Italy, and Britain. Now, I know, like in the U.S., there's a lot of workers in retirement homes who have refused to get the vaccine. 
Faced with criticism on social media that the government was forcing people to get vaccinated against their wishes, the health minister said the health pass was not a sanction, it's not blackmail. He said the country was far from a situation where the general population was being told to get vaccinated. So they're, they're not forcing you to get vaccinated, they're just saying you can't do certain things if you don't get vaccinated. He said the health pass makes life, your life easier. We want to avoid a lockdown at all costs. And again, the thing with the restaurants, you don't have to get vaccinated. You just have to be vaccinated or recently have tested negative. The number of new cases has been rising sharply in France in recent days due to the more infectious Delta variant. At the start of the pandemic, France had some of the highest levels of vaccine skepticism in the developed world. Just over Fran half of the French population has now received at least one vaccine dose. That is from uh, France 24. J.J. Jennifer says many vaccinated are getting the virus. Well, you can get the virus if you're vaccinated, but I've read expert after expert who works in the field talking about, and people who work at hospitals talking about how um, the vaccines, I know the ones in the, the U.S. vaccines I know, give you very good protection against getting severe illness or death. So while... Yes, if you've been vaccinated, you can still get the vi virus. Um, uh, generally speaking, you are way less likely to be very sick or die. Uh, thank you, Jean Ann, for your support. That's very kind of you, Jean Ann. I really appreciate it. And thanks for shouting out the mods, Jean Ann. See, this is, the UK is a good example of this. So this Delta variant, you know, just spreads much faster than the original uh, variant or variants of the virus did. So, for example, you look at the UK and it says daily new cases. And it's like, oh, my gosh. I mean, look at this, you know. Uh, but then, but that's the cases. Now, look at the deaths. Look at the deaths. It's like barely rising. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, this is a really striking graph, isn't it? To, it's a really striking comparison of graphs. This is from Worldometer. That's the new cases. That's the new deaths. Why? Because a lot of the most vulnerable people have been vaccinated in the UK. So, you know, it's, it's, it's keeping people from dying. And I believe and in a lot of places, the cases, are, I don't know about the UK, but in a lot of places, the cases are more going up among younger people who are less likely to die from it. But you can still get very sick and you can die if you're young. But it's just so. So if you do hear, wow, the cases are going way up somewhere, it doesn't mean that everything is as bad as it was. I, I just I, it's really striking to look at these two graphs. But that's because lots of people have been vaccinated. If lots of people hadn't been vaccinated, then this would be much higher. Fat Vegan says deaths are a trailing indicator. Well, ye yes, they are. But the thing is, I mean, if you look here, uh, these cases were going up, I mean, since like May. And this has gone up like a little bit. But... The bottom line is the most vulnerable people, like the older people, have been vaccinated generally. So you're going to get less death. 
And some of these cases might be people who've been vaccinated already, uh, who are, are significantly less likely to die because they've been vaccinated. Hail in place says, can you compare it to a country with low vaccination? Well, I think we, for example, Namibia has low vaccination. Recently, their cases have gone way up, but also their deaths have gone way up. Nola Wahill says, yes, that's what vaccines do. The COVID vaccines are designed to keep you from getting sick and dying. Debbie is wondering whether people two weeks of, two times a week of getting testing up the nose could get peeps more interested in vaccines. So I guess Debbie is wondering, like in France, like to go to a restaurant, you're going to either have to get a negative, either you have to show vaccination proof, proof of vaccination, or show that you've been tested recently. And I think what Debbie is saying, might people just not want to bother with the testing and be like, I'm just going to get vaccinated so I don't have to get tested. Oh, Debbie says nursing home workers in Ohio must get tested twice a week and less vaccinated. No, Rafa, um, if you're watching this on Twitter, um, then you're watching it on Agenda Free TV. The o Agenda Free TV 2 is only on YouTube. It's, it's, it's only, it's only, there's only two news channels on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, it's on Agenda Free TV. If you're watching it on Twitter, it's on Agenda Free TV. If you're watching it on Twitch, it's on Agenda Free TV. So you only have to worry about Agenda Free TV 2 if you're a YouTube viewer. We actually have two news channels on YouTube, Agenda Free TV 2 and Agenda Free TV. But usually I'm on Agenda Free TV. I do these news roundups on Agenda Free TV 2 on YouTube. South Jersey Larry says, I don't think we've seen the worst of this virus. I hope I'm wrong. It depends on where you are, and it depends, well, in terms of this variant, it depends on how much people have been vaccinated. In some countries, it's worse than it ever was, in a number of countries. Indonesia, it's worse than it ever was. I, I believe in Cuba, it's worse than it ever was. Namibia, it's worse than it ever was. Uh, other countries, it's not, because a lot of people have been vaccinated, like in the UK, like in the US. Here's Indonesia. Look at that graph. That's, and that's the death graph. That's the death graph in, in Indonesia. Look at this. Delta variant. But some of these countries, it's, it's striking. You look at these graphs. It's like way worse than it ever was there. That's Indonesia. Uh, thank you, Lizzie, for your support. Hey, I really appreciate that, Lizzie. Thank you. Much appreciated, Lizzie. Thank you. But it's, it's, it's striking how different you're getting very different experiences right now uh, uh, in different countries depending on how much they've been vaccinated.
Reuters says Indonesia reports record cases orders oxygen supplies. Yeah, I've been reading about shortage of resources to treat people in Indonesia. Oops, that's Reuters. I can't read that. Al Jazeera. Dying in their homes, COVID hit Indonesians scramble for oxygen. Citizens search desperately for oxygen to care for their loved ones as overwhelmed hospitals turn people away. I've read a number of stories like this. Look, this is the kind of stuff we were hearing about in India when India was overwhelmed by the Delta variant. It is not only the general populace struggling with shortage of oxygen and medication. Health professionals told Al Jazeera they do not have enough essentials to keep every, keep everyone to help everyone in need. That's from Al Jazeera. Devotee says Steve picks poor countries with no hospital beds or meds and to treat and says it purely has to do with vaccination rates. Right. So, so devotee is trying to claim, I guess devotee is claiming that if, if, uh, if Indonesia had a high vaccination rate, that devotee thinks they'd still be over, they'd still have lots, the same, the same amount of people dying. Indonesia is a major country. Uh, now, they, they, they certainly don't have as much health care as a number of other countries do. Uh, Indonesia is over 200 million people. And certainly, um, it's in terms of the size of their economy, it's fairly large. I'm sure there's many poor people there, too. But to argue that somehow, to, to argue that somehow, uh, that, that, it's not a major factor in what's going on in Indonesia right now, that not many people have been vaccinated, Seems ridiculous. It it almost seems like it almost seems like you you're, you're anti-vaccine, and that's why you're making that argument. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know your view on it. Kind of seems like that to me. Kind of seems like maybe your opposition to vaccines is 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 making you make a really bad argument about Indonesia, and and the relevance of the vaccination to whether people are dying there. And getting super sick, you know, not having a lot of hospital resources becomes a big problem when people need hospitals. You know what vaccines do? They keep you out of the hospital. Look, uh, Southeast Asia, this is from uh, The Economist, a wave of COVID-19 is engulfing Indonesia. The government's response is too little, too late. Southeast Asia is swimming in COVID-19. For much of last year, it had far fewer cases than Europe and North America. But low rates of vaccination, low rates of vaccination, Limited testing and the arrival of new, more transmissible variants means COVID is surging throughout the region. It's interesting that, that they say low rates of vaccination. Devotee, you were saying that the vaccination was basically irrelevant. It's all because they don't have enough hospitals. It seems kind of ridiculous to say that. But as I said, they do have less hospital resources in some places. In absolute terms, Indonesia has the most cases in Asia after India. Well, we don't really care. I, I, actually, I don't really care about absolute terms. I care about per capita. I don't know why they mention absolute terms. Uh, the proportion of tests coming back positive in Indonesia, a whopping 26%, suggests the disease is running rampant. Indonesia's healthcare system is drowning. 
oxygen supplies are running dangerously low. Uh, the rapid spike in cases and the collapse of the healthcare system has invited comparisons to India, another big country with a weak health system. But Indonesia is even more poorly equipped to deal with the crisis. It has just 0.4 doctors for every 1,000 people, less than half the ratio in India. The government has sprung into action. It is trying to accelerate vaccination. Currently, just over 5% of people in Indonesia have gotten both doses. It's interesting, devotee. So, so see, if, 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 being, if, if vaccination isn't a big, big factor in what's going on in India, then why is the government bothering trying to vaccinate people? Anyways, so the bottom line is, uh, and, and then there's other factors talked about, you know, in that article too. Which is right here. For example, this is this Economist article about Indonesia. It says, um, several factors have made the latest outbreak worse. The government never imposed a full lockdown. Um, the restrictions that the government did impose were poorly enforced. During Eid celebrations in May, 1.5 million people intent on going home for the holiday flouted a travel ban, an example of herd stupidity, as Dr. Pandu puts it. The effect is that the virus is spreading practically unchecked. Making matters worse is the shortage of health workers. Uh, the, the most health workers have been vaccinated with Sinovac, the Chinese vaccine, which is less effective than other vaccines. Devotee says it's a mixture of both, but to say death rates is purely related to vaccination rates is incorrect. I never said that. All I said is I compared different countries. Why am I wasting my time? But just to just to reiterate, all I was doing is I was saying, look at the graph of look at the graph of a country like the UK, where the cases are going way up, but the, the but but the deaths are staying very low. Why? Because people have, most people have been vaccinated. Then look at other countries where it's not happening. What's the big difference? Is because they haven't been vaccinated. Sure, of course, there's other factors in there. I would assume that's the major one. All right, no more. Not talking about devotees' point anymore. <laughs> Ridiculous.
All right, give me a shout, at Lookner on Twitter. Year somebody says, I'm from Canada, got my second shot, was talking to the pharmacist, and about 40% of the population up here is leery of the vaccine. Oh, I didn't see this. April Coco, thanks for sending in this. I did not see this. The, 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 the death toll estimate from Surfside will be between 95 and 99 people. That's interesting. It actually is not going to be, it's not going to end up being uh, the deadliest collapse, non-deliberate collapse, structural collapse in the United States history because the Hilton the the Hyatt walkway collapse in was that Kansas City over a hundred people died I want to say that was like 30 years ago Hyatt Regency walkway collapse about 40 year, 40 years ago 1981 in Kansas City two, two walkways collapsed and uh, 114 people died it's really interesting because I'm surprised because I figured, you know, for day after day after day, they said like, like 150 people missing, 140 people missing. And I was like, well, at this point, at this point, if people are missing and no one has come forth to say like, oh, this person's actually alive. They're like, you know, in some other country or something. I just figured, well, most of those people are going to end up being dead. So it's horrible. But I'm surprised. It's better than, you know, 140 or 150. I'm surprised it changed so much. Yeah, I haven't seen this article yet. Uh, I, I, this just this was posted, um, I think, right around when we came on the air. Uh, the death toll from a catastrophic condominium collapse in Florida last month, uh, once feared to be well more than 100 people, is expected to land between 95 and 99 people, said New York Times. Um, okay. In addition to the 10 identified people, the list includes four more names for a total of 14 people on, on, the, on the unaccounted for list. The Kansas City Hyatt Regency in Missouri. No, this is actually wrong. It's not. The Kansas City Hyatt Regency did not collapse. The walkways collapsed, killing 114 people. The number of people unaccounted for in the Surfside ruins has varied wide, widely because so many people reported missing loved ones after the collapse. The building did not keep a record of who was in it at any given time. A team of detectives has had to follow up on each tip, calling relatives and scouring databases for information. Some people left incomplete tips and did not provide contact information, leaving detectives with no easy way to confirm if the tip was real. Do they mean if the tip was accurate or if it was real? Were they getting fake tips? Interesting. Well, certainly it's just terrible either way. It's awful either way. No, Jeff, that's not because they can't identify. That includes people who haven't been identified yet. That's supposed to be the total number. Thanks for messaging me, April Coco. Yeah, I hadn't seen that article yet. Um, I hadn't seen that information yet.
Newsy said, can you mention COVID in Malaysia? I mean, that's another country in Southeast Asia where things, I mean, it's worse there than it's been so far. I mean, you can just see the cases are higher than they've been. This is from Worldometer. But also the, the deaths are higher, generally speaking, in the last month or so, way higher. I mean, this is the, this is the daily death toll for Malaysia, the entire pandemic, and now it's up here. You know, so again, some countries, the cases are increasing, like in the UK, but the deaths aren't increasing nearly as much because so many people have been vaccinated. Whereas a country like Malaysia, you don't have many people have been vaccinated. And not only are the cases increasing, but the deaths are really increasing. CNA says more than 11,000 new cases in Malaysia, third record in less than a week. It's this Delta variant. It just places that managed to not do so bad before are just getting hammered by it. Del it's all Delta variant. Malaysia... Malaysia seeks to beef up health system as Delta variant rages. It's from today, U.S. News and World Report. The, com the country saw a record daily, another record daily rise in COVID cases fueled by the highly infectious Delta variant. It's spreading around the world. This current outbreak has largely, which is the worst they've had, has largely been driven by the Delta variant, now the dominant coronavirus strain in the country. Hey, thanks, Sunshine in Arizona, for your support. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any country where people have not been widely vaccinated could end up with, I mean, I, I would think is likely at some point to end up with a really bad COVID situation like India had, like Indonesia has now, because this Delta variant spreads so fast. And so easily. So even if you managed to not to not do that badly so far, once the Delta variant gets there, it's a whole different story. Cuba, worse than ever before. Malaysia, Indonesia, Namibia. We saw it with India a couple months ago. Diana L says, Israel has cases increasing. Yes, but they have so many people vaccinated that I have to imagine that the serious illness and death won't go up nearly as much as the cases. Kazamara says, it seems in the second year of COVID is worse in Asian countries than in 2020. I wonder, apart from vaccines, is this a result of variants? Well, the article we just read said that the latest outbreak in Malaysia is being fueled by the Delta variant. Look. Towards India, the Delta variant is proof that vaccines are crucial in the fight against COVID. In countries with low vaccine coverage, COVID cases have seen a sudden and sharp, sharp surge, much like India's second wave with the Delta variant. Oh, and that now it's a pay article, but this is what you're seeing, a, a country after country.
Okay, really quick. Hang on a second here. You can give me a shout at Lochner on Twitter. Lady B Lacey Blanc says, in Springfield, Missouri, we briefly ran out of ventilators. Missouri is one of the hardest hit U.S. states right now. Uh, let's see here. Hey, I do want to talk about the fire situation in Oregon. Uh, I want to talk about that. I need to take a one minute break. Give me give me one minute. I'm coming right back in one minute and we'll we'll uh, talk about that in a minute. All right, we're back. Thanks again to our mods. Really appreciate it, mods. Oops, I have to, I have to plug in my iPad. Sorry. Thank you, moderators. We have Sarah Joy moderating, Melissa McQueen, Mark Helton, AJS23, Lady Edith, We also have sorry. Catherine says Steve have Catherine Worthington says Steve you've been vaccinated. Have I been vaccinated? I got vaccinated as fast as I could. I drove two hours to Jacksonville because they were giving out waste avoidance vaccine doses that they didn't want to throw away. So I got mine like three weeks before I could get it in Orlando, and it was worth it to me. That's how much I wanted to get the vaccine. Uh, Meredith McMacken Smith, thanks for the Facebook stars. Thank you, Swan Brown, for the Facebook stars. I appreciate it. Thank you also, Mary Belcher, for the Facebook stars. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Mary. All right, I wanted to mention the... Um, I haven't even checked on it today. 
the bootleg fire. This fire in Oregon, the bootleg fire, is actually threatening some power lines going into California. Uh, bootleg, this is from KTVZ, bootleg fire largest in U.S. tops 200,000 acres, 21 home structures lost, uh, area closures extended. The week old bootleg fire has grown to over 200,000 acres, making it the nation's largest wildfire. Um, it has threatened some 2,000 homes. It burned about 21 homes as well as other minor structures. Now, I don't believe it's threatening any like big cities, right? Big towns, you know. Um, but where's the thing about the power? There are evacuations, right? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, more information. There's different... There are some evacu level, level, evacuations here. I don't know about all the evacuations. Uh, the fire did disrupt service on three transmission lines, providing up to 5,500 megawatts of electricity to California. And that state's power grid operator asked for voluntary power conservation Monday evening. The operator reported that more than 44,500 megawatts were available Tuesday. Well, that's good. Where is... Look at this. This says, uh, OPB, Oregon Public Broadcasting, as a new Central Oregon fire grows, smoke dampens bootleg fire to the south. Eight large fires are burning across Oregon and Washington, prompting evacuations in southern and central Oregon and blanketing much of the southeastern corner of the state in smoke. Where's the bootleg fire here? Blah, 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 blah. Heavy smoke helps with bootleg fire. That's interesting. Is this from today? No, this is from yesterday. This was from yesterday, this article. This is interesting. This is a quote from Late Sunday night, fire officials said the heavy smoke created by the previous day's extreme fire behavior had caused the bootleg fire to moderate. Um, the smoke shielded, shaded the fire, which greatly moderated fire behavior. The shade keep, kept temperatures a little lower and relative humidity a little higher. That's interesting. That was a report yesterday. There's actually, here's an InsaWeb bootleg fire. Blah, 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 blah. 201,900 acres. The fire will continue to be, this is a government website, the fire will continue to be extremely active in unchecked portions of the perimeter with unstable air conditions and extremely dry fuels and lightly development of pyrocumulus. Continued persistent drought and, spy can, and dry conditions will encourage spotting. Where is the, there's a site called, I think, Fire Mappers, where you can see where the, where the fires are. Fire Mappers. So where is I don't even know where I forgot <laughs> I was reading about bootleg fire before now I can't find it let's see Does it label the fires I thought it labeled them No Try if I do this. It is on Google Maps. Bootleg fire. It's down here. That's the that's the biggest one in the country right now. But why is it on fire mappers?
I thought when I've used fire mappers before, when you zoom in, it says the name of the fire. Ooh, maybe it does. Oh, it does. See, it says bootleg. Fire mappers is a cool site. If you Google fire mappers, you can find it. And it it'll give you, it'll show you like, I think it's satellite detected hotspots. Hotspot detected nine hours ago. Hotspot detected 17 hours ago. So it's not like up to the minute, but it gives you a sense of which way the fire's going, you know? But you can actually look at it. You can actually look at all the different fires. <laughs> Again, it's, it's Google Fire Mappers. Oh, thank you, South Jersey Larry. I appreciate that, South Jersey Larry. Thank you. Cryptician says, I was thinking about visiting Seattle this year, but the fires have made me say no thanks. Next year might be better. Vivian Yurton says, the smoke acts just like a shade cloth does on a greenhouse. It lowers the temperature by a few degrees. Smee says, Montana has been covered in thick smoke for three days now. Uh, our viewer Zalop had says, "What top news did I miss?" Um, so earlier, if you if you did missed it, we covered South Africa riots and looting. We talked about uh, the Cuba protests. Um, that was the first couple things we talked about. We spent a bunch of time on South Africa. So if you if you didn't see it, you can rewind and check that out. Uh, one of our viewers says, I can't find you on YouTube. This always happens because people don't remember or don't realize there are two channels on YouTube. On YouTube only, there are two news channels. Agenda Free TV 2 on YouTube is where we do the news roundups. Oops. So if you're a YouTube viewer, well, you would have, if you're watching this, you, you have found it by now. But just know on, on YouTube, I'm normally on Agenda Free TV 1. But sometimes I'm on Agenda Free TV 2. So subscribe to both. On the other platforms, on Twitch, on Facebook, on Twitter, all you need is one channel because everything's on one channel. Also, I have a personal channel called Lookner where I sometimes do live streams that are not about the news. Uh, we might do a stream tonight. We'll see. Um, so that's only on YouTube. So you can find that Lookner on YouTube. If you, go to my, if you go to any of my channels on YouTube and you click on channels, you'll find the other two. Oh, Laura Nolan is fully vaccinated. Congratulations, Laura. I think she's in Ireland. That's awesome, Laura. Congrats. Uh, thank you, Laura, for your support. Yeah, see, this is on the bootleg fire. We were just talking about this bootleg fire. Actually, this is an old article. 
but it was updated today. It's over 200,000 uh, acres now. Um, but it says here, threatening the power grid that connects Oregon and California and driving people from their homes. This is from uh, New York Times. According to a team, uh, the New York Times says, according to a team of researchers, the record-shattering temperatures in the Pacific Northwest in early July would have been all but impossible without climate change. The bootleg fire's intensity at this early stage in Oregon's fire season has officials calling it unprecedented. As the bootleg fire continued to grow over the weekend, it burned across a voltage power line corridor, threatening a major power grid past 66 that connects Oregon and California. But I'm not seeing anything new on that. I'm not hearing of, like, imminent threat to that. See, this says, 7 News ABC, Oregon's bootleg fire threatening California's power supply. It has knocked out valuable transmission lines that California imports uses to import power. Is there anything more about this? I don't know about the, the future threat of this to power. I don't have a detailed explanation of that at hand right now. Anyways, Laura Nolan says we're also having fires here in Ireland. Well, I'll look into if I can find more, more info on that. Judy Brosi Krizanowski says bootleg fire is hospital. Frank Reed says you're not on YouTube. No, I am on YouTube. I'm on Agenda Free TV too. There are two news channels on YouTube. I'm on Agenda Free TV too. Agenda Free TV too. Eventually, everybody will realize we have two channels. I've said it again and again, but I know sometimes people miss it, so. Teresa Selza Fisher is watching from Denver. Judy says, Northern California, much cooler today, will help the fires a lot here. Uh, Lyle, yes, Lyle Paradise says if you go to alertwildfire.org, uh, you can get camera shots of the fires. That is true. Thank you. I don't think we're doing that today, but thank you. Sherry Cola says, I am watching on YouTube now. Okay. Guys. I think uh, we got to the major stories I want to cover. So I think I am going to wrap up this uh, live stream. But if there's big news later tonight, I will come back on the air. Also, I may be doing a stream on my personal channel which is Luchner on YouTube. So at uh, Luchner on YouTube. Only, the personal channel is only on YouTube. So again, uh, if you like this coverage, subscribe, follow. If you're watching not on, a, on YouTube, subscribe, follow at Jennifer TV because that's where I'll do all my news broadcasts on Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. If you're on YouTube, well, 
This is a Jenna Free TV 2. My main channel is a Jenna Free TV. A Jenna Free TV. There's also a look near my personal channel. So check them out. Subscribe to all of them if you want, or not. It's up to you. If you do subscribe to any of the YouTube channels, you want to make sure you click the notifications bell and you choose all notifications, all. Okay, so I appreciate you joining us today uh, for our uh, news roundup. And um, we will have more live coverage soon. Follow me on Twitter for breaking news updates, at Lookner on Twitter. That's where I post news coverage uh, on Twitter, at Lookner on Twitter. Hey, uh, uh, there it is right there. Hey, a huge thanks to our moderators. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Lexa Fulmer. Uh, huge thanks to our moderators. Oh, by the way, our viewer, Louisa, Louisa81 says, thanks for the live stream from Quebec, Canada. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks to our moderators, uh, people like Sarah Joy, Melissa McQueen. Very much appreciated. Thank you, moderators. Sarah55, Mark Helton. Also, Serrero, Mark and NC, Papa Bear, Racing Neophyte. Thanks, mods. Very much appreciate the moderators. They're all volunteers. They are awesome. They're the ones keeping the chat, you know, respectable and respectful. Thank you. Also, um, thanks to everybody who donated. That is super nice of you. You are the ones who allow me to do this full time. So thank you to the donors uh, if you do want to support Agenda Free TV, with a donation, you can always go to agendafree.tv, agendafree.tv. But thank you so much. Okay, uh, Discord, remember, you can chat with other viewers when we're not on the air in the Agenda Free TV fan Discord. Uh, and uh, also, if you sign up for that, it's, it's, they give you really reliable notifications. If you have the Discord app on your phone, uh, the notifications pop up on your phone. That's what I have. But um, Discord, you can go chat there with other viewers when we're not, not around, we're not live. So check it out. Uh, the mods can post that Discord link. And also, it's the Discord link you can find at the bottom of the YouTube video description for this broadcast. And also, oops, let me do this. Why is this acting all weird here? Hang on. Facebook's acting strange. Acting strange again. There we go. Uh, also, um, if you have any interest in being a volunteer moderator, that would be awesome. We can always use more moderators. Uh, ask the mods, and they will tell you how to get more information on that. All right. I want to say thanks to our viewers, too. Thank you for watching. Um, Twilla McCord, thank you. Kay Lowry Bati, Scott Swanholm, Teresa Selza Fisher from Denver, Judy Brozy Krizanowski. Thanks, everybody, for the uh, Facebook stars as well. Oh, hang on a second. I think I got them all. Hang on here. What is going on? Oh, I see. I see what's happening. Hang on here. There. Got it. Sorry, I had to bookmark something. Then I'll thank some more viewers. 
There we go. I think. Facebook, they just changed everything. Now it's all confusing. All right, I'm going to have to deal with that later. Hopefully I got everybody. I thanked everybody who gave stars. Thanks to our other viewers. Swan Brown, thanks for watching. Catherine Worthington, Scott McFarlane. Also, thank you for watching uh, Shaggy. Alf Akhtulu, KJ Dub. Lakers, Me Betty Boop, Eleven Glowfly, Johnny Autonomous, Lyle Paradise, Charlie Jolene, Flying Q-Tip, Buzzy Booba, Asha, Amy Calamity. Thank you all for watching and everybody else watching on Twitch and Facebook and Twitter. No Lee Wee Hill, thanks for watching. Oops, sorry. Our viewer, our viewer uh, Bozo says, Small Bush Fires Ireland under control. Thank you, Bozo, for watching. Also, thank you, Dr. Tuso, for watching. Oh, Trash Bag Ghost Chris Noble. Hey, thanks for your support, Trash Bag Ghost Chris Noble. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching, Miss Ravioli, Cryptician, Smee. Lynn Downey, C. Michelle Sparks, Laura Nolan. I'll have to check out that link later. Thanks, Laura, for sending me the link. MGD, seize the, seize the day. Cranky Poodle, Cats Go Nuts, Gone with the Gale. C. Michelle Sparks, Carib Guyan, J. Marie, Lexa Fulmer, Bab, Stephanie L. Juice Box, thanks for watching. Set of Depants, Michelle R. Zindley, RT Firefly. Soulful Music, Rhonda Roll, Scott Bixler. All right, guys, I am wrapping this up. But again, I appreciate you watching. All right, that's it. That's our news roundup for today. If there's a big story later, we'll come back on the air. So thank you for watching. And thanks again to our moderators, and we will see you soon with more live coverage uh, on Agenda Free TV and Agenda Free TV too.